Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, day after power tour, I'm in Illinois, about to hop on the freeway and make my way towards Los Angeles. After running power tour with all my pals and saying goodbye to them the night before, gave the car a good once over in the hotel parking lot, checked everything as much as I could, and got ready to go explore some of Route 66. Start off the day getting the dirty, smelly STI and hitting the highway out of Illinois and into Missouri. Made my way towards St. Louis and ended up finding a small replica of the Gateway Arch, which was kind of cool. Made my way towards the Route 66 State Park and got some information, got a couple keepsakes, started on the Mother Road. Saw this sweet 58 Bel Air chilling on the side of the road, so of course I snapped a few pics of it. And immediately got turned around, went the wrong way, found my way back on 66 and just kind of potted along. Wasn't really in a rush, taking my time. I was sort of trying to imagine myself as being there, maybe in an older car back in the day when the freeway didn't exist. And it was, it was honestly a cool feeling. I didn't really stop too much. Uh, I more absorbed it as a drive than something scenic. of a day. Basically uh, kind of popped in and off Route 66 and 44 all day and uh, I kind of was just taking it in. I was kind of gearing up to start taking more photos and filming more video and then uh, well automotive debauchery kicked in and took a rock to the radiator and it's now leaking everywhere. Uh, I really can't drive the car the way it is. It's losing the entire contents of the cooling system in about five minutes. Luckily I didn't overheat it. Uh, I was able to get it to the first gas station where I discovered it and then uh, got it over here to a Best Western. And, uh, ordered a radiator at the O'Reilly's here in Mount Vernon, Missouri. Yeah, it's not going to be here till 2 p.m. tomorrow so basically I'm chilling here until then. I'll try and make the most of it I guess. I'm going to go try and explore what this town has to offer. The plan after we get everything fixed is we're making our way down I-40 Route 66 towards California where we'll be storing the car until July. And uh, yeah, this is kind of a weird way to start the video, but of course automotive fun always prevails. <laughs> anyway guys, um, I'm going to go check in, get my bags inside and uh, start taking care of business. If I can find something closer tonight that I can throw in tonight, I will do that. But uh, for right now, I'm stranded. If you like what you see so far, please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you all watching the Power Tour video. It's a very, very heartfelt uh, tribute to my friends. As it was an incredible trip, as it always is. Uh, but something just felt a little bit more special this year. I don't know why. And uh, yeah, never a dull moment when you're driving uh, a rally car across the country. See you guys in a bit. As it turns out, Mount Vernon, Missouri was not the most bustling area, but it's better than breaking down the middle of nowhere, so I did take a walk and just kind of enjoy the sunset. Enjoy the nice weather, although it was blistering hot still. Just snapped some photos and caught a movie in the room. Woke up the next morning and my buddy Mitch made his way out in his 67 Cougar to come and hang out for the day and keep me company. 67 Cougar with a 289 and a 5 speed, uh, 410 rear gears. Um, 315 rear tires, because we like to have fun, I guess. It doesn't do burnouts, though, so I don't know. Uh, just drive the heck out of it. That's about all I can tell you. Drive the heck out of it. Good morning, guys. This is Mitch. What's up? He came down from uh, his friend's bachelor party to be back up for the day. Um, we're going to go eat and have some fun and wait for a Subaru radiator to show up and then... Stinking 2 o'clock right there, dude. Yeah. Stupid. So uh, we're going to do that and then probably swap a radiator and then I'm hitting the road and just gonna book it tonight and yeah, yeah, maybe get back on schedule but I doubt it yeah doubt it so but it's a uh, it's nice to slow down and chill and meet some new friends
after running around and having some fun in the Cougar, grabbing some food, Mitch and I got to work. Swapping the radiator on the GC literally took 35 minutes to do. Had to move the fans over to the new one, so I just used zip ties through the fins to uh, mount them. I'll probably have to redo it once I get back to the car later this summer. Got everything filled up, bled, and fired it up. Everything was good to go. All right, well, been hanging out with Mitch all day. He took me for a nice long cruise in the Cougar. We got some food. The radiator showed up. It was the right one. We got it in, bled it, drove it. Seems good. What do you think, sir? I think we're good. Send him down the road. <laughs> some, we're going to take some pictures and then uh, it's time for us to hit the highway. I got to go west. He's got to go northeast. East and north. Yeah, so we're going to do the damn thing and get on the road. This has been, this has been pretty wicked. Yeah, it's been a good day. <laughs> for a breakdown, good day. About as good as it can go. Anyway. flapping around pretty good and uh, I gotta do something about it because I don't want to start uh, stressing out the oil lines on the turbo or anything. So these are the solution. It's hose clamps that are a little bit bigger than three inch that I'm gonna wrap around the downpipe. 
and then we'll stick this little guy through that one to the mount that broke. Hopefully there's a hole there I can get it through. And um, see if that holds it. Yeah, I've been trying to fix it all day. Hey, are you need help with something? Uh, exhaust mount broke. I'm just doing the old hose plant trick. So. Yeah, I think I'm good. Appreciate it. Oh. You guys got to see this precision fine art. <laughs> do as the Romans do and hose clamp down to your car all right calling that good enough I'm gonna get some dinner and continue on it's really hot on the pavement even though it's in the shade Oklahoma sucks I'm just kidding it doesn't suck it's just hot maybe I'm a little crabby probably because I haven't eaten so I'm gonna do that fixed what's up Pretty, pretty long day, um, pretty incredible day. I got to spend half of it with Mitch and the Cougar and that was really rad. Um, we got the radiator swapped in like half an hour in the GC, um, bled it and uh, hopefully you guys can hear me without too much wind noise. But anyway, we bled it and uh, it's been good the whole way here. I'm in Clinton, Oklahoma right now and uh, I'm falling asleep at the wheel, I'm dead, so I had to pull off. There's not a restaurant or anything open in town, so I'm basically eating gas station food for like a midnight dinner, and uh, I'm gonna try and hit it early, do my best to get up at like five and then be on the road by six. Of course, you know, that always changes. Tomorrow we're shooting for, oh, we're six hours from Albuquerque. I wanna be into the far side of New Mexico, and we can do some exploring and then have a chill day on Tuesday and actually enjoy the trip, the last bit of the trip into Los Angeles. So it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be sweaty, might be a little bit miserable, but it's still gonna be a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys following along. I will see you tomorrow on the road. Later. snaps. It's too damn windy here, so I'm gonna get back on the road. That was cool. Next stop, I think, is Albuquerque, New Mexico. New state. I left Cadillac Ranch and booked it across the panhandle of Texas to Glen Rio, New Mexico, where I found a dirt section of Route 66. So, of course, I had to make a few miles in the GC. I didn't get sideways, it was too windy to get the drone in the air, but I did get to enjoy it and something I get to say that I've done. Very appropriate for my shitty little rally car. I then continued to make miles into New Mexico towards Albuquerque. The heat was starting to get to me. It's been tuned along all day, making my way towards Albuquerque right now. Honestly, I wanted to like explore some desert and stuff, but it's well over 100 degrees right now, and I, I'm so exhausted, like, I'm just trying 
trying to make miles of like exist out here. It's too, it's kind of becoming too much now. I'm just like radiator setback and working with the downpipe, just everything kill time. I don't know, I'm kind of there, guys. I'm trying not to complain about it. This is an incredible experience, like crossing all these new states, but it's been it's been arduous to be out them. I can't even throw the drone up. It's so freaking good. Once it got later in the day, I had made my way past Albuquerque. The sun was getting lower and the temperature dropped, just enough to be bearable to be outside moving around. I jumped off the I-40 back onto Route 66 just in time to see this massive fire on the side of a mesa. I then pulled over to find this cool old hotel sign next to an abandoned service station. I was really feeling the black and white photos this entire trip. I was trying to mix them in as much as possible with my Fujifilm recipes just felt appropriate. This old service station was pretty worse for wear. Didn't really want to sneak inside of it, but it was cool to hang around. Kind of take it all in. A JDM car on Route 66 might sort of feel out of place, but for some reason, the strange aura around all these old abandoned places just fit with the car so well, I felt very at home. Sun started going down and I started making my way towards Arizona. The air was beginning to cool and the car was running fantastic. So I just kept making miles. All right, no clue if you can even see me. I'm at the Continental Divide in New Mexico. And as you can see, the GC8 has no taillights. I've been battling a ground on it this whole trip. And I uh, got flashed a bunch of times on the freeway little ways back and yeah sure enough they're out so I'm gonna fiddle with it and see if I can get them to come back on for a little bit. I am less than 30 miles from Gallup, New Mexico which is right on the border with Arizona. I'm gonna get into Arizona tonight. I'm gonna knock off a few more hours. Hopefully get within nine hours, eight hours of Los Angeles. I was hoping for six but you know I had to stop and at least see some cool stuff. I couldn't just make miles all day. Anyway, I'm gonna fiddle with the uh, taillights here and get back to it, because this is getting old. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Because yeah, this is uh, pretty stupid. I don't want to get rear-ended on the freeway, so. Good old GC problems. I jammed two sheet metal screws in each socket for the taillight bulbs to make the grounds work. And then I made my way into Winslow, Arizona. Grabbed a couple photos on the fabled corner made famous by the Eagle song found a hotel for the night, hit the road early the next morning. 25 miles from Winslow, Arizona, lies the Meteor Crater National Monument. It's something I've always seen in photos and in videos, and without even realizing that I was heading towards it, I saw the sign with moments to spare and I veered off the highway at, let's just say, an unsafe speed. Back in the 90s, Asteroid and disaster movies were big at the box office. So seeing this in person brought back all the memories of seeing things like Deep Impact and Armageddon and stuff like that for the first time. It was kind of fun to let my imagination run wild and bring back the memories of when I was really into space travel and things like that when I was a kid. It was really cool to see in person. Highly recommend it if you're on the I-40 heading east or west near Winslow. A little bit pricey, but check it out. It's well worth it. Well worth the five minute drive. The next exit down the I-40 heading west was to Two Guns, Arizona, which is an old ghost town. But at the very entrance is this old abandoned gas station. From what I could find, it was once called Remy Jim's and it served as a main service area for Two Guns as a popular tourist destination back in the heyday of Route 66. Personally, I felt an extreme amount of deja vu coming here. It's like I had imagined this place in my mind so many times, thinking about photography and abandoned old places and the dream of actually taking a road trip and experiencing 66. I took in as much as I could and spent well over an hour there just snapping photos and walking around and just seeing it from all angles. It just brought about this weird feeling of an unearned nostalgia, but it was like a place that I felt comfortable hanging out in and just absorbing. Even though it's old and dilapidated, it just, it something felt right just to be there. I enjoyed every second of it. 
fired the car back up, kept heading west towards Flagstaff. The day kind of drew on, and honestly, I sort of lost track of time. It was like my mind just hit warp speed and my sights were set on California. I quickly looked on the map and found myself heading towards Seligman where I pulled off. I spent about an hour wandering the town just snapping some photos. We had some wish.com Pixar cars there. Just kidding. There were actually some pretty cool old cars hanging around all over town. It was like a lot of the area was just kind of frozen in time. Absolutely bustling. There was an old Texaco sign. It was a really, really cool spot. I highly recommend if you can going through the area, pull off in Seligman as well. It's a great way to kill a few hours. After inhaling a Philly cheesesteak, I got back on the freeway and crossed over into the Golden State. with Highway 15, crossed over the mountains, just as the sun was starting to go down. I did feel like I was done and like, I just wanted to end the trip and get on and get home. But there was still one order of business that I wanted to take care of. The last time down here, I got a check engine light right at the entrance to Angela's Crest and decided not to go. But I vowed that I would come back with the GC and make it happen. Filled up with some gas, checked everything over, packed away everything so it wasn't flopping around the car, and then I headed up into the canyon. This run up the mountain closed off two weeks on the road. Thousands and thousands of miles and so many new memories with my friends. I got to see new states. I got to see things that I 
could once only imagine what they had looked like. My feet had been on the ground at the rim of a meteor crater. I saw so many old gas stations and old abandoned buildings, and I got to see what life on the road was like back in the day. I only bit off a tiny piece of Route 66, but I do plan on going back and seeing it in the future. This trip was nothing short of amazing, and completing it in the GC8 just makes it that much more special. And it's still not over. As always guys, be kind, drive hard, and at some point, hopefully on an incredible journey, I'll see you on the road.